Ever since Jaws, the only other shark movie to be successful was, well, Jaws 2. We've had plenty of shark movies over the years. Indie ones like Open Water, big budget ones like Deep Blue Sea, knockoffs like Cruel Jaws, and thanks to Sci-Fi Channel, we'll never run out of giant, mutant, or swamp shark movies. I've always liked shark movies, probably because I love horror and sharks scare the living shit out of me. Shark Night is a 2011 horror thriller from director David R. Ellis. While I'm not comparing Shark Night to Jaws, I will say that Shark Night far exceeded my expectations and is way better than the critics say it is. The movie opens, as many of these do, with a hot girl in the water. She gets attacked by a horrible underwater predator, her bikini top stealing boyfriend. Please don't take my top off. Oh, well, Please I'll don't. Promise. I won't. Oh, I got it. She turns around and we see... Oh, right. PG-13. We see nothing. Something mauls her from beneath the water. How deaf is her boyfriend? She's not that far out that he shouldn't be able to hear her screaming. Anyway, we cut to a butt cam, because if DOA taught us anything, if you can't have nudity, overload on gratuity. College roommates Nick and Gordon are playing Halo on Xbox Live. Okay, a few things wrong here. First, who plays like this? The last thing I want to see while playing is some dude's balls in the camera. Secondly, this. Not really hearing you because I just logged you in and you're losing gamer points. Dude, it took me six months to get this. Yes, points. it did. Get involved. He's losing gamer points? I'm guessing they were referring more towards his score on the leaderboard, but by calling them gamer points, it makes it sound like achievement points. Lastly, there is no way they're playing Halo online without some kid in the room screaming racial epithets while singing the Sonic the Hedgehog theme and threatening to rape their family. Malik busts in the room, and they somehow just paused an online game. Malik is happy because thanks to Nick tutoring him, he got a B and he won't lose his sports scholarship. He tells them he's taking them to Lake Crosby to celebrate at Sarah Palski's house. Since Nick has a major crush on Sarah, he agrees to go. At the local gym, Sarah's been running on the treadmill for three hours? I don't think I'd run for three hours over the course of a year. Malik, Gordon, and Nick meet up with nude male model Blake. I had the pleasure of sketching your genitals every Tuesday and Thursday. Malik's girlfriend Maya, the smoking hot Beth, and the lovely Sarah. They head off to Lake Crosby in a nifty little time-lapse montage. Allow me to take this opportunity to point out the fact that a group of friends all got together to go away for a weekend to celebrate the fact that one of them got a B. Reach for the stars, kids. They stop at a bait shop to get some essential supplies, like Red Bull and the most generic vodka I've ever seen. A local redneck, appropriately named Red, drives up and immediately starts being racist. That's awful, sweetie. What's that? Nothing that helps it up front like that. Malik is about to beat his ass when Dennis steps in. We find out that Sarah used to know Dennis, but she's been away from the town for over three years. What do you like, a uh, English major now or something? Let me guess. Psychology. Wait, wait, I know, uh, marine biology. Mm, is it computer science? Uh, come on, throw me a bone here. The group leaves and gets a boat to go to the island. While speeding through the water, they attract the attention of the swamp cops. The cop chases her all the way to the dock. Well, 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 little missy. You should consider yourself still undefeated. <laughs> Ugh, rich people. We find out the sheriff's a family friend and works for Sarah's father. They head to the house to settle in with another montage. Yes! This is... Ugh, PG-13. Hold on, showing nipples in PG-13 is bad, but sitting down and pissing in PG-13 is okay? Well, at least the director had the good sense to leave the girls in their bikinis for the rest of the film. Blake spray tans his wiener. Well, I guess it's cool for girls who want to know what it's like to fuck an Oompa Loompa. Gordon is playing beer pong and hitting on Beth. His method seems a little awkward. When are you gonna drop the boy toy and saddle up with a real man, huh? Oh, really? You got someone in mind? Please get on top of me. Blake, Nick, and Maya go out on the lake so Malik can wakeboard. Things are going along just fine until... Aw, shit. A shark knocks Malik off his board and he swims to the shore. He makes it to the beach and I don't care what happens anymore. I just want to look at this for the rest of the movie. We see that he's now missing an arm. Gordon tries to call for help, but of course, no cell service. Okay, fine. I understand not having cell service on an island, but they don't have a landline. This family is rich, and they don't even have a satellite phone? Thankfully, since Nick is studying to be a doctor, he knows what to do to stop the bleeding. He then dives into the water to find Malik's arm. 
Screw that, man. I would have thrown that arm, hoping the shark would leave me alone. Nick makes it back just in time. Maya, Nick, and Sarah take the boat to rush Malik to the closest hospital. Malik is bleeding into the lake, which gives the shark a beeline right to them. It rams the boat, knocking Maya overboard. They turn the boat around to rescue her, but the shark gets to her first. The shark rams the boat and jams the throttle. They bail out of the boat and it crashes into the dock. The guys bring Malik inside, and I know I'm supposed to be paying attention to what's going on over here, but all I can see is what's going on over here. They go outside to shoot off some flares, because I guess the sheriff didn't see the gigantic fireball. Speaking of which, how is the dock still there? I can't imagine a bunch of panicked college kids being able to figure out how to put out a gasoline fire. Sarah comes in to check on Nick and Malik. I like how she doesn't change into regular clothes, she just puts a thin shirt on over her bikini. Blake fires a shotgun off to get the attention of a passing boat. Yes, because nothing brings help faster than gunfire. The boat pulls up and oh goody, it's the Rednecks. Does Red have shark teeth? They ask Dennis and Red for help. Malik lost too much blood, so Dennis offers to go to the closest hospital to send out a helicopter. Beth doesn't want to stay on the island, so she decides to go with them. Gordon also goes, so Beth isn't alone with Dennis and Red. Dennis and Red have some preventative measures against the sharks. Now... She just sit back and enjoy the view. Why, thank you, I will. Sarah is talking to Nick. She explains why she hasn't been back to the island in three years. Sarah explains how she used to date Dennis, but she was the one who cut his face open in a boating accident. My eyes are up here. Yeah. I know where your eyes are, darling. The better response would have been... Malik finds out Maya is dead, so he goes to get his revenge on the sharks. She was my life, man. She was the only part of me that I couldn't lose. Well, uh, that and your throwing arm. Malik goes into the water and draws in a shark. Oh, it's just a hammerhead. It's hard for me to be afraid of something that looks like it's making the derp face. Malik attacks the shark and fails miserably. <laughs> Nick jumps in to help and they manage to kill the shark. Dennis reveals that he's the one responsible for the sharks. Dennis shoots Gordon and he falls in the water. He swims away but the shark still gets him. Blake decides to take Malik to the hospital on a wave runner. You mean the same wave runner that was in the dock that got blown up with the boat? Dennis makes Beth strip but only to her brawn panties. Damn you PG-13. Dennis tells Beth about the cookie cutter shark a.k.a. the dreaded, budget-just-ran-out, computer-generated shark. They dump Beth into a net with the sharks, and they film her death. The sheriff shows up at the house. Is he at the hospital? Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow your roll. Wait, nobody sent you? I saw the bonfire. He saw the bonfire? He saw this, but didn't see the giant explosion earlier. The sheriff calls for help, and Nick passes out. Blake and Malik are on the jet ski. Malik sees a shark chasing them and decides to sacrifice himself to save Blake. Blake takes off and, I have an idea, get on land. Sarah overhears Red talking to the sheriff on his radio. She tries to attack the sheriff, but Dennis stops her. Blake speeds off and, shark from out of nowhere. Nick wakes up tied to a chair. Out on the boat, Dennis and Red have Sarah and Sherman. The sheriff explains his master plan to Nick. What is cable television's longest running programming event? Shark Week, loser. And a few of those 20 million want to watch the real hardcore shit you can't get on basic cable. And we're willing to bet that they'll pay top dollar for it. You're sick. That's their plan? A sheriff, two rednecks, and a bait store clerk managed to trap and put cameras on sharks so they could sell the carnage to rich people who like to watch Shark Week? It just so happens that all this is going on the exact weekend that Sarah is home after three years, giving Dennis the perfect opportunity to get revenge for her cutting up his face. The sheriff cuts Nick's leg, Nick kicks over a gas can, and the sheriff dumps him in the water for a scare. The sheriff then puts on a really bad cover of Round and Round by Rat. Really, guys, you couldn't afford the rights to the real thing? 
Nick pulls a lighter from out of nowhere and burns off his zip ties. Good thing that lighter still works after just being submerged in water. Nick torches the sheriff and feeds him to the sharks. So Nick's in the building and it's nighttime. He dives in the water and it's early morning, and then he gets to the boat and it's day. Dennis kills Red. Nick then shoots Dennis and knocks him into the water. Nick tries to save Sarah, but Dennis drops her back into the water. Nick grabs the air gun and goes in after her. Sarah is trapped how? Look at the size of this gap, and look at her. She could easily squeeze her way out of there. Dennis disarms Nick, and oh shit, here comes Sharky. Sarah grabs Dennis so Nick can get free, and Dennis gets eaten by the shark. Sherman brings Nick the air gun, and he blasts a hole through the shark. Nick rescues Sarah, and aw, even Sherman helps. Nick revives Sarah, and then this happens. The movie was filmed in Shreveport, Louisiana for about $28 million. Stuntman director David R. Ellis is great behind the camera. He knows how to shoot a proper action sequence and keep the tension up. He also knows how to balance action with humor, as he proved with one of my very personal favorite films of recently, Motherfucking Snakes on a Motherfucking Plane. He also directed Final Destination 2, the slick but overlooked Asylum, and The Final Destination, which admittedly was the worst of the series, but that was more due to a bad script than bad directing. For Shark Knight, the official title he wanted it to be was Untitled 3D Shark Thriller. Sinkia Walls played Malik, and he was pretty kick-ass. I was actually bummed when he died. He's done a good bit of TV work, and most recently he was on the ridiculously entertaining Secret Life of the American Teenager. Joel David Moore played Gordon, and he brought a great sense of humor to the role. So you're probably gonna have to get her drunk, right? I mean, she's not gonna let you tickle her private sober. Okay, I see what's going on here. You're trying to play it cool and stand back, right? Because uh, you're too much of a puss to step off your game, so... Meanwhile, somebody else is just gonna swoop in and grab that little rabbit. And I get the pleasure of listening to your vagina cry itself to sleep at night. It's fun for me all around. Even though he made it big with Avatar, for me, he'll always be JP from Grandma's Boy. And I don't mean that as an insult. He was fucking hilarious in that. Catherine McPhee played Beth, and great googly moogly was she sexy. She got her big break on American Idol. I never watched the show, so I never even knew what she looked like until I saw her in this. It was great to see Donnell Logue on the big screen again. Granted, he plays the same guy he always plays, but he never disappoints. The lovely Sarah Paxton was Sarah. She was in two of my favorite movies of last year, this and The Innkeepers. I liked how badass her character was in the movie. She was a sympathetic character, but then was like, fuck you to Dennis when he was getting eaten. She's definitely someone to keep an eye on, and if she keeps wearing bikinis like this, I will watch any movie she does. When the movie was in theaters, it was titled Shark Knight 3D, but they dropped the 3D when it was released on DVD. The movie has the kind of 3D in it that I don't mind. There are a few scenes where stuff flies into the screen, but it doesn't take you out of the movie. Most 3D flicks anymore do nothing but poke you in the eyes every five seconds, and it's freaking annoying. The sharks in the movie were a mixture of animatronics and CGI. The animatronic sharks looked great, but the CGI ones were uh, not so great. Although I will say that the shark jumping out of the water was awesome. Speaking of which, that scene was one of the many things that people complained about the movie. Uh, sharks can't jump out of the water. Okay, then how about this footage from the BB series Planet Earth? That sure looks like a shark jumping out of the water to me. Another complaint was how did the sharks survive in the lake? Early on, they mentioned that it's a saltwater lake. A shark, man, this is insane! This is a lake! It's a saltwater lake. What the hell does that mean? It means it's not impossible. Probably the dumbest complaint was why didn't they drive to get to the hospital? I don't know, maybe because they were on an island? Did these people even watch the movie? Alright, I'm not saying that the movie's perfect. Dennis's motivation was weak, and the idea of selling shark footage to rich people, while unique, is pretty ridiculous. However, we needed some sort of reason, and it's better than no explanation at all. After the movie was over, I was stunned that this was the movie that most people labeled as the worst film of 2011. This? Didn't any of these people see The Roommate? Shark Knight is nowhere near a bad movie, let alone the worst of the year. It was just pure campy entertainment. I think after a few years go by, people will rediscover this and maybe it'll get the recognition it deserves. While yes, I would have liked to have seen some nudity and more gore, I thought they pushed it pretty far for PG-13. At least it was filmed with the intention of being PG-13 and not R and then watered down to the lesser rating. 
PG-13 movies can be good and gory. I mean, remember Anaconda? 